Hey guys, uh, we're gonna go on to 9.1.2, which is all about the different types of errors you can have when you are making, uh, doing a, signif a significance test. Um, and then we're also gonna define what power is um, in a statistical test. So, that'll be fun. Um, so all this goes back to the idea of um, a hypothesis test in which you have a claim that you want to kind of dispute, that you want to test whether or not you really think it's true. So um, you can think of it similar to a jury, right? Um, before a verdict is reached, um, you get lots of information, and then eventually the jury decides either guilty or not guilty. And either the person is innocent or they're not, and they've committed the crime. So there's generally four different scenarios. Once a verdict is reached, there's four different scenarios. Um, the first one being, well, the person's guilty and they're found guilty. So that's option one. The other option is they're innocent and they're found not guilty. That's option two. Um, both of those are good things. Yay! Because we did it right. Um, and then the next two options are both bad. They're errors, right? So you can either send an innocent person to jail, um, so say that they're guilty when they're actually not, or um, you can set a guilty person free. So say somebody's not guilty when they actually are. And so those are the possible four options when you're talking about a jury. Um, in significance testing, you may or you probably are not um, doing stuff for a jury, but you're testing a claim. And so either the claim can be true or not, um, and then you can either claim that, or you can either, with your test, decide that that claim is um, true or not true. Um, and you can either be correct or incorrect. So you still get the same four types of options. So your actual scenario is either your null hypothesis is true or it's false. And then you compare that to your um, possible conclusions that you make based on your sample, which is either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it. So you can accurately reject the null hypothesis when it's false, so then you're in this box, right? And that's a good thing, right? That's happy because we did the right thing. We rejected it when it's actually false. Um, we could fail to reject it when it's true. Also a really good scenario means we did the right thing. Um, and then our two errors are we reject the null hypothesis when it's actually true, um, which is the top left box here. Um, and that's called a type one error. Um, and then a type two error would be um, the true null hypothesis is false um, and you fail to reject it. Okay, and the way I remember which one's which um, is I think about fail to reject is a fail to as in the number two fail to reject is a type two error. Hey, Love little tricks. Okay, so both of those scenarios are bad situations. So you don't really want a type one error. You don't really want a type two error. But sometimes it just happens. Okay, so in the following cases, um, try this on your own first and then I'll explain the answers. Um, so pause it or whatever you need to do. But um, basically in the next two situations, um, decide what or figure out what is a type 1 error and what's a type 2 error and then decide which one you think is worse. Um, so the first example is you have several truckloads of potatoes 
that are sent to Lay's um, to make potato chips. And um, when they arrive at Lay's, they take a simple random sample of potatoes and test them for like really bad spots. Um, if they find that more than 5% of the blemished, uh, of the sample of potatoes are blemished, um, then they send them back. And um, number two is a jury decides whether a man is guilty or not based on the evidence provided. So what's a type 1 error and what's a type 2 error in each one of these cases? So in the first case, um, a type 1 error is that um, the truck of potatoes is actually only 5% 5% of them are blemished or less um, and we make um, a conclusion that um, more than 5% are blemished and so we send the truckloads back and so the consequence of that is perhaps you um, the other company loses money or maybe you lose a little money because um, you didn't accept the potatoes or whatever. Um, type 2 error, uh, the potatoes are worse than 5%, um, but you take them anyways. And this case, perhaps you make bad potato chips um, and then have very unhappy customers. So which one do you think is worse? That one's for you to argue and use statistical evidence for. Ha ha! Um, and then the last, uh, the second example was a jury decides whether a man is guilty or not based on the evidence provided. Type 1 error is, um, so we assume innocent until proven guilty, right? So our um, null hypothesis is that the person is um, not guilty. Um, and it turns out that you end up send, sending an innocent person to jail um, because your null hypothesis is not guilty, which means um, in a type 1 error, your null hypothesis is correct, so he's actually innocent, um, but you say that he's guilty. So anyways, uh, that's type 1 error. Type 2 error is the opposite. Um, so instead of sending an innocent person to jail, you end up sending um, a guilty person free. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, the probability of each of the errors um, because it depends on uh, what you set your initial um, significance level to be and whatever your alpha is. Um, so we're going to look at a couple examples and I think it'll really help to look at this little applet. Um, so what I did is I set up um, this scenario where your null hypothesis is the, that mu is 5 um, and my alternate hypothesis is mu is greater than 5 um, and then I just set some some info sigma is 1 my sample size is 10 and then I'm setting my alpha level at 5 percent so if you look at the top distribution this is assuming that um, our null hypothesis is true so um, since our alpha level is 5% and we're looking at um, something, we're looking at our alternative hypothesis where mu is greater than 5, this is our region of rejection and that area is 5%. And so if you happen to get an X bar, right, you get a, a sample mean that is greater than this value right here, um, then you would reject the null hypothesis um, when it is actually uh, true. And that would be the probability of a type 1 error. So again, this region is set. Whenever you set alpha, that's what your um, the probability of a type 1 error. So the problem is, what if um, our null hypothesis is actually false? then the sampling distribution is going to look different and it's actually going to be higher 
right? Because that's what we're testing. Um, the true sampling distribution would actually be higher than we expect. Um, and so the mean would be something like um, right around um, here, right? And we're gonna, we assumed, um, I just typed in 5.5 just to have a number there. Um, and so our true mean um, of our sampling distribution and therefore of the population is 5.5. So that's what your true distribution looks like if the null hypothesis is false and 5.5 is the true mean. Which means that the red area is the area in which you have rejected the null hypothesis when it is in fact false. So this is a good situation, right, because we have accurately rejected uh, the null hypothesis. Um, so then the probability of a type 2 error is um, being on this distribution, right, where um, your null hypothesis is actually false, um, but still not rejecting it. So the entire white area at the bottom here, which I'm going to shade in gray, all of this area, this is the probability of a type 2 error. So we call this probability um, of a type 2 error beta, uh, just because we need something to call it. Um, alpha is the probability of a type 1 error, and it's our level of significance that's set ahead of time. And then the probability of a type 2 error, or beta, that is determined by alpha and whatever it is that you're um, guessing is the true parameter um, of the population. So last but not least is the definition of power. Um, and power is, is this red area here. Um, so basically the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis um, when it is in fact uh, false. So let's just go back and um, write the definition of all of these things because um, you can figure out what uh, the power is just by subtracting beta from one, right? Because it's a density curve and um, the density curve area is one. All right, so here are just your definitions. Um, probability of type one error is equal to alpha. You set it or the company sets it or whoever. Um, the problem, whatever you're doing. Um, probability of a type 2 error, we call that beta, and that corresponds to the gray area. You like how I color-coded there? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's the probability of making a type 2 error. Um, that's actually a little bit harder to find mathematically, so we don't usually ask you to find it, but they might give that to you, and then they'll ask you what the power is, and power is always 1 minus B, because that's the probability of um, correctly rejecting the null hypothesis when it is false, um, given a certain um, a certain value of the parameter. Okay. Um, so that's about it. We'll go over more of that in class, and we'll kind of we'll keep working with this. So it'll be fun. Have a good day. Bye. Mwah. Oh wait, I totally lied. One more thing. Um, so if you increase alpha, make it larger, right? Then the area of the the yellow region that becomes larger, right? And so your probability of a type one error increases if alpha increases. But if you take this back down, your probability of um, a type 2 error, which is now just this region, that actually decreases. So a lot of times um, companies will say, you know, I want the probability of um, a type 1 error, whatever it may be, to be this, that, or the other thing, and I want um, beta to be something else. And so you have to play with sample size and alpha to figure out what would be the best scenario.